Hello Legacy Savers, Marsh here. So today we're going to talk about classes in Java. Um, these are a very advanced topic. It's probably one of the more advanced ones we'll get through. However, these are, I would say, the most used in this class. So that's why we're starting it early. Classes are very similar to file cabinets. So each of the file folders that we have made digitally would be placed in the same file cabinet because they're all the same kind of thing. They're all students, right? But each file folder is a different creation of the thing. They're all a different student. So some vocabulary you're going to hear me talk about for this unit and probably for the rest of the year. An object is a creation from a class. It contains methods that pertain and variables that each member of the class has. So like our student class was each of the folders you guys made was an object of a student. It's a different type of student, but they all have one thing in common. They always have, they always have the same variables. They always have the same methods, stuff like that. Class. Class is a template that describes the characteristics of a kind of object. Okay, so the class is we making the student class. Okay, each of these has methods and instance variables, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. What I mean by that. The other word, the other couple of words, encapsulation, is the combining of data and behavior into a single software package. Basically, it's the creating of a class. The idea that I can make one object that has many variables in it and many methods attached to it is encapsulation. The ability to like, I guess, combine data types into one thing is probably what that basically was the simpler way to put that. And instantiation is creating a new object from a class. We've been doing that when we've been creating our keyboard reader. We've been instantiating one. We've been making a new object from the keyboard reader class. So, some characteristics of an object. An object has behavior as defined by the methods of its class, aka what can it do? So, like, can it give its name? Can it change its name? Um, can it change grade level? Can it graduate? That would be different objects that it can do, or different behaviors, different methods. Um, objects also have a state, which is another way to say what at the particular moment is instance variables aka what variables are stored into this what's the like what's the current name of our um, student what does it look like is the state really and then an object had its own unique identity which distinguishes it from all of the other objects in the computer's memory what have we called it so like when we make keyboard reader we always name him reader that would be his identity we're calling him reader Okay, now there's kind of different types of variables and we've been kind of talking about these already. Primitive is just containing a value. Those are like your int, your double, your boolean, char, the shorter and longer versions of these. Okay, reference is like string, reader, remember references point, have a pointer that to an object that data is stored elsewhere. So a reference variable is just a variable that stores an address to an object. What you guys are going to be making a lot now of is a reference variable when you make a brand new object. Structure of a class. Here's what we're going to be consistently making for our classes. We're going to make a class name and some modifying phrases. We're going to give it some instance variables, some variables that are stored inside that class. Some methods that indicate how to initialize a new object. AKA these are called constructors, how, what needs to be there to build that object. So kind of like if we make a new student, we're required to have um, a, a name, a grade level, that kind of stuff. We need some information to build that object. And then one or more methods to specify how an object responds to messages. So if you tell them to um, change name, they know how to accomplish that task. Because those would be the methods we would be writing. So here's an example of a class that I have written. It is called rectangle. Up here is right here. It tells me it's rectangle. Right here are some information that's being stored inside of there. 
I have also this and then a couple of methods and we'll talk about each of these pieces here in a minute. So first thing is the class header and your instance variable. Your class header is right here. Okay, so this is the class header. Class header gives you two things. It tells you what kind of visibility is available. In this case, it's public, which means that every program can access this information. There's another visibility modifier known as private, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And then right here is the name of the class. Now notice this is a capital letter. Capital letters are reserved for classes. It's not required. However, it just kind of gives us the difference between a variable and a class. And then down here, right here, these are my instance variables. Okay. So let's dive in a little bit more to that class header and those visibility modifiers. So for visibility modifiers, I have public and private, and those are examples of deciding who's able to refer to them. Uh, methods are usually declared to be public, and so are classes. Because if my class isn't public and it's private, I can't make the class. I can't make an object if it's private, which would kind of lack the regards of what I want to have happen, right? So we have to usually make a class to be private. Uh, methods are usually declared to be public, so then people can actually refer to them as we work on it. So the instance variables are the storage for data in the instance of any class. Those variables can be used in any method, so they're a global variable for the class, that's what we would call them. Instance variables are nearly always private, because when we're creating them, we want to prevent outside classes from repre represent, referencing excuse me, to the instance variables directly. Making instance variables private is an important aspect of our hiding of our information because we don't want another class to be able to change those variables without going through the class first. So we're going to make them a private instance variable. So when you looked here, they were private. So that prevents anything from accessing them unless it's in the same program. Second thing is our constructor. A constructor is basically how do you need to build the class to make a, this ob make an object of this class? What do you need to build it with? So the principal purpose of our constructor is to initialize instance variables of a newly instantiated object. Constructors are activated when the keyboard new is used. So like when we made our keyboard readers, we did keyboard reader space reader equals new keyboard reader. That was us calling upon the constructor of the keyboard reader. A class can provide more than one constructor, providing each with a unique parameter list. However, all the constructors must have the same name, the name of the class. So right here, constructors, what they're always going to look like. You're always going to have the name of the class right here, and it's always going to say public. So public name of the class. Right here is our parameters list, okay? This is the variables that are needed to create, in this case, a rectangle. To make a rectangle, I need a length and a width. And then what I'll do is inside of my constructor, I will make my instance variables, the guys that are using we're using to create the class I assign them to my parameters the parameters is what will be sent when we create our object because you know when we've been making our keyboard reader right and then we had reader equals new keyboard reader We always had parentheses behind that. That was our way of saying nothing was needed to make a keyboard reader. Now, if in this case, if I wanted to make a rectangle in a separate class, so not the key, not the rectangle class, but let's say I wanted to make it like in main, like we've been doing, I would say rectangle. I would give that rectangle an identity, a name. Let's name him Fred. Now it's say equals new rectangle. Now to make a rectangle though, I need to provide two things. I need to provide a length and a width. 
So I could provide it like five and three. Then what would happen is it would go find the constructor in the rectangle class and it would assign five to length and three to W. And then inside the constructor, that five and that three would be assigned to the instance variables of that particular object. Okay, kind of strange, but nevertheless, that's how it's working. The next kinds of things that we're making is what's known as accessors. You may also hear these be called getters because they get things. Okay, so right here I got two methods. I got public int get perimeter and public int get area. They return things. Okay, so ultimately what an accessor method is, is it accesses a class's object without altering the object. Usually it's going to return some information or it's going to print a value, okay? So here's how accessors and getters work. They're usually going to be a public method because I need the ability to access them outside of this class, okay? Then we have what is it going to return? In this case, we know that the data type that this method will return is an int. So I have an int right here, and then it's the name of my method, get perimeter. Now again, notice there's parentheses here. This is if I need a parameter or something to make this method work. I don't need anything to make this method work. That's why there's nothing inside the parentheses. Then since it is a returning guy, so especially since it says int right here, I have to put the word return, and then what do I want to return? I want to return the perimeter, so I did two times parentheses length plus width, okay? Again, same thing. I did a public method. I am returning an integer, so this is the return type. If you are returning something, you got to say what data type you're going to return. And then the name of my method is get area. Again, this is a no parameter needed, so I don't need anything extra to figure out what the area is. So inside, since I am returning, I said I'm returning an integer, I have to put return and then what I want to return. This value would return to the main method. So if I said Fred dot get area inside my main method, he would return, he would go into his, his methods, he'd be like, okay, get area, get area, get area. Ah, I take my length and my width and I multiply them. So that was 5 times 3, 15, and he would return that back to the main method. That number 15 would come back to the main method from where you called get area. The other kinds are mutators, or you might call them setters. They are called setters because they set information. So these are going to change the state. Now remember what state means. These are the variables, okay? Variables of an object by modifying at least one of its instance variables. A method that receives a value from a client makes it to change the instance variable. So in this case, I am changing the dimensions of my variables. Now notice, normally on the um, accessors, this had int or double or something like that. This is a void. This means that I'm not returning anything. And that's very common for a mutator. Mutators are not going to require you to return anything because they're just a changer. They don't need to return anything. They're just going to change some information on the class or the object that you're making. I name him. He's called sent dimensions. And again, notice I have some parameters this time because I need to know what am I changing my length and my width to be. These right here, these could be whatever you want. This could be int Bob and comma int Sally. It doesn't matter what you name these. However, I try to make sure that they're kind of connected to what I know I'm going to be using them for. So again, I got int len and int w. You do need to have a data type because these are actual like variables that you're making right here. And then what I do is I assign my instance variables equal to those parameters that were sent. So if I said Fred dot set dimensions, let's say I want to change Fred's size, I can make him a five comma six, 
Okay. What I would happen then is this 5 would go into len and it would go into the length, change that instance variable. The 6 would go into w. The w would change my instance variable of width. So then let's say I say Fred dot get area. He'd return 30 in that and because I'm accessing the new length and width that I have just changed. The final kind of method that's very common in a class is called the toString method. Now, toString methods are super useful in the regards of they allow you to print something. So if I would say system out print sop, making it kind of smaller there, and I would print out Fred without the toString method, it would just print a bunch of gobbledygook. Makes no sense. Bunch of letters, bunch of numbers, doesn't matter. Doesn't make sense. The toString method is if I print my object, what do you want to say? So maybe I want it to say like, hi, my name is Fred. Hi, I have this for a length and a width. In this case, I am again, here's my return type. It's a string because it's a two string, right? Two string method. No parameters required in a two string. And I return the length and the width of my rectangle. Now this right here, we haven't talked about this yet. This makes you a new line inside of a string. Kind of makes it super cool when you want to make a new line. Notice it's inside the quotation marks. So if you ever want that ability, it's right there for you. So two string is allowing you to print out the information about your object. You can make it say whatever you would want. I could say return hi. And then if I system out print Fred, he would say hi every time I print him out. Okay. So it's just useful in the regards of being able to spit out the information of a lot of times the two string has a couple of instance variables that you want to have printed out if you print out the object. Um, instance methods operate on an individual objects of a class. So that'll be your constructors, access, and mutators. Static methods perform an operation on an entire class, not its individual objects. Static methods are like when we've made in, let's say, computer principles, when you guys made a function and then it, you called that function to do something and then it went back, that would be a static method. You could also make a static method with main so that let's say I wanted to make a, uh, I don't know, a sum method. So I could say public static get sum and then it would call that method, do its job and then come back. So static methods are very commonly used with, let's say, main. Instance methods, though, are for classes as we're making them. Now, you also have the ability to make methods the same name but different parameters list. So like, let's say I want to make double or public int product int num one, int num two, and then I pu make public int product double number one, double number two. That is the same name of my method, but different parameter lists. One of them will find me an integer of the two, and one of them will find double. The return type doesn't matter on it. You don't care which kind, but your parameters and your return type can be different, but overloading would be if you have the same data type and then two of the same or different parameters and the same name. This allows you to have a different way to initialize objects of a class as well, and it allows you to kind of work with different information. I know that was a lot of information being thrown at you guys. So we're going to do a lot of examples before we start working really hard on this so that we get some ideas of more working with these classes. But once you get to it, I think it, it's kind of like a blueprint. It kind of gives us this idea of, and it gives us a lot more cool things to make in Java, in all honesty. So with that, that's the end of this video. I will see you later, Sabers.